all of the CEOs that I speak to, particularly in Germany, particularly in the auto industry, there's a lot of concern around 2024. What are we expecting in terms of growth in Europe and critically in terms of inflation? Well, we are going to be expecting growth in 2024 and we can expect inflation to continue to fall. The growth isn't as high as we would want, uh, but even though we do have growth, we alongside that are going to have record levels of employment. So we do have to acknowledge the uncertainty and the risks that are confronting Europe at the moment, mainly because we are so close to the war, but we are still in a phase of growth, albeit low growth. And do you think that inflation will get to that 2% in the sort of next year or two, or do you think that it actually could have a longer tail? Uh, I believe it will get to 2%. Uh, I believe the right decisions are being taken at a monetary and a budget policy level to contribute to us getting to that point. And and I want to talk a little bit about what we're here to talk about, what the EU leaders are talking about, because as the president of the Eurogroup, few people know the minds of European finance ministers as well as you do. What do you think we will get in terms of seizing not the Russian assets, but the profits? Will we get an agreement today? Do you think that there is a will there? I think it will t get, take some time to get to that agreement. The main point being uh, that the Commission published their proposal on that this week. Mm -hmm. It now has to go to member state governments here within Brussels, within the European Union and be considered in various technical and ministerial mm. meetings that will take place. And that will just take time to do. But there's momentum behind us, and I believe progress will be made. But what will now happen is yep. this proposal will go to member states of the European Union, and efforts will be made to continue to coordinate on this issue at an international level within the G7. And I'd like to get your sort of early reaction as well, because we had a proposal out of the United States on these so-called freedom bonds, which is sort of looking at how to deal with the future profits and potentially package them to front load much larger quantities of aid to Ukraine. Do you think that that would have buy-in with... Well, this is the kind of issue that will have to be considered now in the context of the proposal from the European Union Commission. Uh, I do believe there is a recognition regarding the importance of this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, the proposal has only just been published. It is a proposal that needs to be, and I believe is, legally sound. And now governments need a little bit of time to respond back to us. But the key point is, is that progress has been made, and we need to continue to look at how this matter will be coordinated across the international economic community. And funding defense is also front and center for your yep. finance ministers and for your leaders. This idea of joint debt. Is this a pipe dream, or do you think there's a path to this? Well, the discussion on that uh, has really begun here today. Yeah. Uh, we've heard a number of member states make the case for us. I think it's fair to say at the moment there isn't a consensus on the matter. However, defence expenditure has now been increased very considerably mm -hmm. over the last 18 months. And a few weeks ago, here in this building, uh, Prime Minister has reached agreement on a €50 billion Euro funding package for Ukraine over the next number of years, mm -hmm. some of which indeed does relate to defence. So what there is consensus on is the need to build up defence expenditure that is happening, and the debate is beginning now in relation to a new financial instrument for that, but there isn't currently agreement. And a quick word on the EIB. Do you think that there will be a rule change? One. And two, does there need to be more money allocated to defence? I believe there's only about $8 billion currently in terms of lending that is uh, earmarked for defence. Well, I understand the EIB are looking at this issue yeah. uh, under their new president, uh, President Calvino, who's doing an excellent job now leading the EIB. Mm -hmm. They will be looking at what their role is in relation to this, and they have been asked by prime ministers and finance ministers to consider this issue and to report back to them shortly. And you hold, obviously, a position also within the Irish government. We'd be remiss if we didn't mm -hmm. ask you. Do you support um, Simon Harris for party leader? Of course I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I've known uh, Simon uh, for many, many, many years. I believe he has all the qualities that will enable him to be a, a very, very successful leader for Fine Gael and will also allow him to be an excellent Taoiseach. Uh, we've had a very dramatic week back home <laughs> Indeed. Uh, where we'll be saying uh, our current Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, is here in our last European Council. Mm -hmm. I believe he's done a phenomenal job as Taoiseach uh, and as leader of our party uh, and I wish him every success and every good wish in the time ahead and very much look forward to working with and supporting Simon. And there will be ultimately a cabinet reshuffle, will you continue to serve in your position in the cabinet? Well, that's very much a matter for whoever the new Taoiseach would be. Uh, I, of course, hope to, to continue with my work, uh, but from being through many moments <laughs> like this in the past, it's a matter for the new Taoiseach, and I'm not going to make his life any more difficult <laughs> by making statements on it. Of course, I want to continue with my work, but I recognize that it's his decision and his mandate.